Hello and welcome back to Rev Real Estate School. I'm your host, Michael Montgomery, and today what we're talking about is how we can ask for referrals. And we're also going to talk about just some general referral hacks. But when we're asking for the referral, this is going to be a different way than likely you have encountered or likely you've been taught. And there's a reason for that. So first off, we probably don't have to go into a lot of detail as to why referrals are so important. Over 90% of most of our deals are going to come from referrals or past clients. And so knowing the value of these, it's always mind boggling to understand that as agents, you know, 90% plus of our business is going to come from this, but we don't tend to put a lot of emphasis on how we're going to go about growing this side of our business. So it's extremely important, but we have to be structured with how we ask the question. Now, why do I say this? I say this because traditionally when we're asking for referrals, we're doing one of these two things. We're saying, do you know anybody who's looking to buy or sell? And can I have their name and phone number or email address? Now that is super off-putting to me. If some sort of business owner was to ask me for a referral and ask for my friends or family's names and phone numbers, there's no chance I would give that. It just feels so uncomfortable. I haven't got their consent. I would have to go and do a bunch of work. So instead we have to approach this in a little bit of a different way. The other way may be asking somebody who they know it's going to move in the next six months, but this also doesn't work. And the reason for that is twofold. First off, very similar to the first approach, it's very off-putting because we're now we're trying to kind of back somebody into a corner and who do they know who's moving. And the other piece to this is somebody who's looking to move in the next six months. Well, there's a good chance that they've engaged with an agent or started the process. And so I'd much rather get somebody earlier on in the transaction, one, even two years out, because it's all about how we take care of our database. That's really what real estate all will come down to. So we really want to avoid these more traditional approaches that are asking for names and phone numbers, as well as asking who they know that's going to move in the next few months. Those are just off-putting and they tend to not work. So what can we do instead? Well, one of the best approaches is asking for a referral without asking. So how does this work? It's quite simple, actually. All we do is we simply let the client know that we're trying to grow our small business and ask them if they have any ideas. So if I was talking to a past client or just somebody generally in my sphere of influence, I would say something along the lines of, I'm trying to do everything I possibly can right now to grow my small business. Do you happen to have any ideas that could help with this? Now, magically, you've done three things. You've indirectly asked for the referral because by saying this, the first place their mind is going to go is who do they know who's looking to buy and sell, but you haven't actually directly asked them that. So it's not off-putting at all. So that's the first benefit. The second benefit is the wording you've used. You've used the word small business. Now, generally speaking, people are going to want to support small businesses. And regardless of if you're a brand new agent, or even if you're a seasoned agent after 20 years in the business, or even a team, we're all in the small business ecosystem. And so regardless of production, we're all in that small business ecosystem. And then the third thing that you've done is you've asked them for help or advice. And this, of course, is the Benjamin Franklin effect. People are going to be more drawn to you when you ask them for help or advice. So this is a very powerful line. We're simply saying that you're trying to grow your small business and asking them if they have any ideas. It's extremely effective. Now, one of the first things that comes to mind when we go through this is people say, well, I don't want them to think that my business is really small and not thriving, which is why I need to ask. And I would just say to that, just think if somebody asked you that question, we always want to put ourselves in the shoes of the client or of the customer, or of the person that we're talking to. So if I'm putting myself in the shoes of that individual and I ask that individual for a name and a phone number of a friend or family member, that doesn't feel very good if I'm putting myself in their shoes. However, if I'm putting myself in the shoes of somebody asking me for my ideas for how to grow their small business, that to me does not come across as somebody who's not successful. That comes across as somebody who's hungry, somebody who wants to grow, somebody who is motivated. So don't be concerned with people thinking that this is going to reflect poorly on your business. This is going to have a hugely positive impact. And here's the other thing is they may have ideas outside of things that we may know. That being said, most of the suggestions, because we're all out here trying to learn real estate, so I'm sure that a lot of the suggestions will be things that we've already heard. But really what we're doing here is we're helping turn their mindset towards referrals. Now, there's a couple of other things that we have to keep in mind. Asking that question is extremely powerful. But on top of that, we have to just, of course, stay in touch with this person over time. So how do we do that? Well, it's really not overly challenging. And usually the biggest blocker here is ourselves. Now, every real estate agent out there needs to follow up more. 
I really haven't met a lot of real estate agents who follow up enough. Almost every single agent needs to follow up more. So with that in mind, how do we actually follow up? Because a lot of the times where our mind goes is we need to have something kind of earth shattering to follow up. Like maybe their neighbor's home sold. There's an article that's really important to them or something happening in their community. And your CRM may remind you, hey, it's time to follow up with John. And you think, well, I don't have anything to say to John. Well, how about you just say to John, hey, John, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great summer. I hope you're having a great fall. I hope you're having a great winter. How are you doing? How's your family? How's the kids? That is it. Now, the structure that we tend to use is what we call the text twos. And the text twos are sending two text messages every single working day. And these just go out to somebody. They can go out to anybody as long as they're people in your database or people that you're wanting to put in your database. And within that, all we're doing is we're just reaching out and asking them how they're doing. Very, very simple. And that is staying in touch. We don't need anything that is like mind-bogglingly different from everything out there. We just need to stay in touch with them and do so in a human way. And it's as simple as that, really. Next, people aren't going to refer us solely for doing our job. They're going to refer us for an amazing experience. Now, this is something important for us to keep in mind because just for helping them buy and sell real estate, that's not enough. We have to wow them at different stages throughout the transaction. Now, how do we actually end up doing that? Again, oftentimes where your mind goes is our mind is going to go to try and come up with something that is completely different and something maybe even really expensive. And none of those things truly matter. What matters here is that at different stages throughout the transaction, they feel that they're cared for. So let me give you a couple examples. First off, maybe it's after a listing presentation. You're sending them a nice handwritten note and you're sending them a video email. Maybe it's once they have an offer accepted, you're sending them a bouquet of flowers. Maybe it is even once the offer is accepted, they get a templated email from you that indicates here's all the important days, here are some things to keep in mind. Or maybe after closing, you reach out, you find out the garage door is a little bit sticky, so you put them in touch with somebody who can help them with that. These are the small things. We're not talking about large things throughout the transaction. We're talking about small little areas that we can delight them as they're going through the transaction. Now on top of that, you may be thinking, well, what if I'm looking for referrals from people in my SOI who maybe I haven't done a transaction with? Well, now we need to lean on knowledge. And when it comes to knowledge, really what's most important here is that we have a perspective. So just saying the market's hot or there's not a lot of inventory is not nearly enough. We need to have a perspective and we need to look for opportunities and risks in the market. So what are the opportunities when there is a lower inventory environment? What are the potential risks? And by having a perspective, and that is something that a lot of us need to understand that's very important when we're just having casual conversations with people, we can't just say the market's on fire. We can't just say the market's slow. We can't just say prices are down. We have to talk about opportunities and we have to talk about risks. And that is going to help us remain memorable during that conversation. Very important. And finally, this one's probably pretty straightforward, but we have to remain visible. And how do we do that? Most of us are going to do that by way of social and just posting consistently. So you can see how this all comes together is we're asking somebody if they have any ideas on how to grow our small business, which then leads us also to stay in touch with them, just asking them how they're doing, which is also going to jog their memory about that question that you had asked them. And then we're remaining visible as well as having some sort of perspective on the market and wowing them with small little bits of delight throughout the transaction. All of these things together are going to lead to a ton more referrals for you. Thank you very much for watching or listening to this episode. Remember, you can reach out anytime at revrealestateschool.com or I'm on Instagram at the.michael.montgomery. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next lesson.